Hello! Oh, sorry. Hello, welcome back to my workshop. Today we're going to be looking at a Spectrum diagnostic card that I brought from eBay. It has LEDs on there, so even if we do not have a display, we can see what's going on. I also have three Spectrums that all have faults with them, and a pile of chips that were sent over from a friend. So we are not going to really fixing them in this video, just running through the diagnostics and doing a best guess as to what parts would need to be replaced. So let's have a look at the cartridge itself. This is the diagnostic cartridge that I brought from eBay seller My Retro Store. It's based on the original design by Dylan Smith and is known as the Digiboard on the GitHub. It comes as default with Dylan's 48k diagnostic ROM version 0.1. This takes full advantage of the onboard LEDs to show activity and memory testing even if the screen has no display. This is very very useful but I found that the later versions actually found more faults. They only use the LEDs to show which banks of memory are actually faulty. In my opinion it would be better to be able to use both without having to use the reprogramming. So a jumper to change between the version 0.1 and the version 0.38. The two of them work well together to show different faults. To actually change the type of diagnostic that we're using we need a working spectrum. I'll show you the first steps of this. So first we need to change the page jumper to positions 2 and 3. We then plug this into the spectrum and power it up. It will just boot as normal and it will give you the Sinclair research screen. Then we need to load the flash utility. So we type clear 32767 and then we type out 31,36 three, and this runs the code. It will then give us a screen and we can do various functions like erase the bank, copy a new one, program it and then we can reboot. For the first part of the test I'm going to be using Dylan's Diagnostic 48k version 0.1 so that we can use the LEDs. This one is dead basically so let's plug in the diagnostic cartridge What we should see is all the light come on and go off as it resets itself and then it should flash through the sequence of tests. So it would be good to see if we actually are getting any, anything running on the spectrum. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so now we are getting all the LEDs on. So the diagnostic program inside here it's just not running so i think what we should do now is have a look at some of the most common pins on the ula i've got my pin out here which comes from uh, dean's website break into program and what i'm looking for here we should have 14 megahertz clock coming in to the ula and then that is divided down to give us the 3.5 megahertz for the CPU. Now I'm going to connect up to pin 39. Pin 39 is labelled as Q, which is the clock coming in. So I'm going to turn it on. And you can see there on the scope that it does do something, but we basically have no clock coming in. If we look at CLK, which is pin 32, this will be the clock that will go out to the processor should be 3.5 megahertz. And you can basically see that we have no clock going to the processor. Our debug lights are, are not doing anything as well. That says to me that there's something wrong with the ULA and it's basically the easiest thing that I can change anyway. I do have a, a working ULA. Okay, so that's our known working ULA in. We are set up to capture the output from the spectrum and we can now have a look at the diagnostic card. So I'm going to power it on. So we now have a screen. We've got a blue border with a black background and we are going through our memory tests. So you'll see that it's gone past the lower RAM. Now it's on the upper RAM. And it's doing the second type of test for the lower RAM. 
Now we're on the second type of test for the upper arm. We're getting display as it's doing the other tests. So we get black and white lines. And then very soon it's going to move on to testing the interrupts of the ULA. So we should see some text on the screen in a second. So upper RAM OK, lower RAM OK. The ROM is OK. Now we are testing the interrupts. The test complete will attempt to boot to the Spectrum ROM. And we boot to a Sinclair screen. So the basic tests of this diagnostic card are saying that this had a faulty ULA. I'm not going to go any further on this. Um, I need a keyboard working and the other diagnostic. Uh, but for now, let's say that this one is working. This is the one from my friend and he's already tried to fix this. So let's do the same thing again. Let's turn this on and just see what it's doing. So we'll plug in our composite, we'll plug in our power. This has been tested for all the voltages and everything, so I'm happy to turn this on. So we get a white border and a black screen, and we have lines going down the screen. What we're seeing on the screen with the lines is very typical of a lower RAM failure. I did some research, and most websites show this as lower RAM. So it's no wonder my friend replaced the lower RAM with that new module. So again, let's plug in the diagnostic card. We're now testing our upper RAM. And we have an error. So we're now showing the actual test that it did. And then it shows which it says is the bad chip. So the seventh chip, I'm just going to turn that off. So if we look on our upper RAM, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's saying that that chip is bad. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the piggyback. So I do have a chip and I have tested this. I do know that this is a good chip. So all we're going to do is piggyback it. So just push it on and that's now sitting on top of the other chip. Let's go back to our diagnostics. So now it's going to try booting and we've got this black screen with the white lines down it again. But we've tested all the RAM. So again, I think this is an internal fault in the ULA. So let's just put in our known good working ULA. Okay, so there is our good ULA in and we'll just run through the tests again. Now it's going to try and boot to the Spectrum ROM. And we've got a good boot. So that's a second bad ULA without doing a lot more tests. But um, it's passed the diagnostics and we get to our Sinclair research screen. Let's just take the card out, power up and yep, Sinclair Research Limited. We have a bad upper RAM and a bad ULA. Uh, so I'm sure my friend will appreciate the good news. On this Spectrum, we just had a white screen, white screen, white border, and it wouldn't work with the capture device. So I just did a quick white screen so you get the idea and we won't show the screen until we get it working. So we connect up the diagnostic cartridge. It does start to do the memory tests and then it fails when it gets to testing the ULA. No, it definitely does not like that. It's got to the point where it would be testing the interrupts and it isn't doing anything. Let's have a look with our scope. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn this on and we'll probe some pins. Uh, so we've got UV and Y, which is the video signals. So Y is just high. V, we do have activity on V. And we do have activity on U. So it is trying to output something, but it just, the capture device just does not like it. We check our clock. We do have a signal. Uh, this scope doesn't like reading that signal though. <laughs> but I believe it, it's okay with the other one. 32, so yep. 2.5 megahertz output from the ULA. So it looks like it's just a display problem. So I'm going to swap the ULA again. This is a dash seven and I'm waiting for that to come in. But in the meantime, we can use the dash six. And now we do have a screen. We have the blue border with the black screen like we saw before. And we have our Sinclair Research logo screen. From initial tests, that's three bad ULAs and one bad memory chip. These are the three ULAs that we have just taken out of the three spectrums that we have tested. The first one came out of my friends and it's the one that has the black screen with the lines going down it. This time we are using the 0.38 diagnostic and you'll see on this one it actually fails a lot sooner rather than getting all the way to the end and then giving us the lines we actually get a failure very quickly into the test. The second one was dead on the first test and it's still dead and it did nothing so we'll move on. This is the third ULA and was the one where we had the white screen that we couldn't capture. This time it does actually output but we just go to a red screen which is a failure very very quickly. Now we're going to look at these four ULA that a friend sent me and they were all marked with an X. He believed that they were all faulty. So we're going to run them through the 0.38 tests. The first one I've labelled as lower RAM. So the first time that we run it through the test it appears to be okay. But then as we get towards the end of the first batch, we start to see corruptions on the screen. Then when I run the test for the second time, everything just gets worse and worse. And eventually we get lower RAM failures and all of the RAM that fails. So I wonder if this one is a heat related problem, but it was very unstable. The second one was dead and we got nothing. So we'll just move on. So now we're moving on to number three and number four. And I've kept them separate because they were marked as being faulty, but so far they've actually passed all of the tests. I tested them with the version 0.1 and I've tested them with the version 0.38 and they pass. Although my keyboard isn't quite 100%, I did connect it up and we tested that the keyboard input was working okay. And then I moved on to trying to load a game. And I loaded up Manic Miner, and as we can see, it's loading, it loaded all the way on the Dash 6 ULA, no trouble whatsoever. We get to the end and we can play Manic Miner. The Dash 7 ULA was a little bit tricky, so all of the test passed, but when we came to try to load from tape, it wasn't happy. You can see with the same volume settings as the others, it was struggling, and I had to really crank the volume up max out the volume on everything and then eventually we got it to load once it had loaded everything was fine and it worked just the same as the other one so i think i'm going to stop this video now before it gets too boring and out of the four ulas that we got from a friend we've actually found two of them that work. Although the Dash 7 had some problems loading from tape, it needed a very high volume, it's passed all the tests. So we do have two ULAs that will actually work okay. 
and then the other two were definitely faulty. The one that would actually kind of work for a bit and then it seems to be as it gets warm, the faults just get worse. There will be a part two and I am prepping at the minute. So this is a Spectrum that I brought, the cheap one. And as you can see, I'm putting sockets and zip sockets in there. So we've got a tester board and I have a processor, Z80 to test, and then we have various other chips. I'm not going to be messing about with the lower RAM just because that could potentially do damage if we put bad chips in. But we can try some of the other chips, actually like make some faults and see what the diagnostic does. I also like the second version of the diagnostics, the uh, version 0.38, that seems to find faults that the 0.1 fi uh, doesn't find, but the 0.1 does have the LEDs that shows us what's going on when we don't have a display. So. I think having both of them is good, but it's a bit of a pain to keep reprogramming it. But I'm, I'm not going to be using it that often, so it's okay. So thank you for watching. If you are interested in any videos like this, I do have a playlist of repairs. I'll pop that up on the end of the screen and lots of interesting things going on at the moment. So I will see you very soon with part two with the Ziff Socket Spectrum and testing some other chips.